former uh, Chelsea coach Mauricio Pochettino has been named the new coach of the U.S. national team. Now, he's a man who has experience, lots of experience uh, in uh, European football, club football, but this is his first time he'll be managing a national team. Well, joining us now all the way from the United States of America, two of our very great friends, uh, talking about Zach Lowey, who is uh, an internationally well-known football journalist, and another good friend of mine, Robert Andrew Powell, who's also an author and football journalist as well. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight on Game On. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, very quickly, uh, did, Ed, did either one of you, let me start with you, uh, Zach, did you see this one coming? I mean, Pochettino, big name. I know you've been mixing, we've been throwing names like uh, uh, Klopp, uh, Jürgen Klopp, possibly, but now Mauricio Pochettino, good, good move by the USA. Yeah, I have to say, I totally did not see this coming. You know, as someone who has supported the U.S. for about two decades now, I'm used to coaches like Jurgen Klinsmann, Bruce Arena, Greg Berhalter. Definitely not someone like Mauricio Pochettino. I know that there are a lot of people who still criticize him for the fact that he hasn't won any trophies and that he hasn't really materialized uh, this success into anything uh, in terms of trophies. But uh, you look at his resume, you look at his trajectory, this is someone who uh, just a few years ago was considered one of the top managers in European football. He really took uh, Tottenham from rock bottom to the apex of European football. Obviously wasn't able to get the job done in the Champions League final versus Liverpool, but it, you, you know, in terms of his career, he's clearly a manager who does a lot better when getting the chance to build something up from square one, such as Southampton, such as Tottenham. Not so much where he's being tasked with, you know, the pressure of big money signings such as Chelsea and Paris Saint-Germain. So I do think that's going to be a big distinction. I think that he's going to have you know, a lot more liberty, a lot more patience than he had at Chelsea, where even uh, even with Chelsea being the third best team of the Premier League last season in the final month of the campaign, uh, even with Chelsea qualifying for Europe, he still wasn't able to convince them that he was good enough for another season. With regards to the U.S., though, I think that this is a major coup, and I think that he is the perfect man to really bounce back from the humiliation of uh, Copa America, you know, becoming the first ever Copa America host nation to fail to uh, reach the knockout round. And uh, I think that he is just a fantastic addition for the U.S. if it materializes. Okay. Um, Robert, your opinion? Do you agree with Zach? Is this a perfect signing? I mean, it's a great signing. I, I mean, I, I agreed to be on here mostly just to attack our former coach, who I hated. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I think it's great, and I think signing him, it really did come out of the blue, but it, it speaks to a certain American attitude of, like, why not just get the best guy we can possibly get? Mm -hmm. and, and, and going out and doing it um, looks like he's going to be signing with us. Um, I mean, it's just, you it, it can't be anything but optimistic. It just feels great. Okay, uh, well, guys, I, I gotta ask you this question. Um, a lot of people look at the United States as the next frontier of world football. I'm talking football, football, not um, American football, of course. Uh, as the next frontier of world football, it's a huge country with a diverse population. You have immigrants from Africa, South America, Central America as well. These are strong footballing homes. And there are a lot of people who are saying it's just a matter of time before all, all this coalesces into a really formidable unit. Um, and, and with, with the likes of Marshall Pochettino coming in and what I've just talked about, can all this coalesce in time for a real major, major uh, run at the FIFA World Cup in 2026? Zach? I, look, as, as excited as I am for Pochettino to take charge, you know, no manager can be a magic potion. No manager can be a genie who will, who will you know, magically take uh, middle-of-the-line players into world-class superstars, right? It's incumbent upon the players to reach that level, okay? So as much as you can blame Burhalter for the failure of the Copa, ultimately a lot of these players let themselves and their country down. Uh, I think that's going to be a really big question over the next two years, not only... 
uh, is Pochettino going to be able to instill confidence and and build a sturdy spine in this U.S. team? But are the players going to be able to take the next step in their development, right? We, you look at this U.S. team, and it's clearly made up of a lot of players who are either approaching their prime or in their prime, right? The likes of Christian Pulisic, Weston McKinney, uh, players who the, kind of the jury is still out on, right? So I think that apart from Pulisic, there really aren't too many players who have been able to solidify themselves as stars, uh, especially in the attacking department. I think that is going to be a really big question, right? Are these players going to be able to make the difference, not just for their clubs, but for their country, right? You look at the U.S. under Greg Berhalter, uh, they failed to beat a single opponent inside of FIFA's top 25 uh, apart from CONCACAF teams such as Mexico. So this is a U.S. team that pretty much beat whoever uh, it, it was expected to beat, but crumbled against the biggest opponents. Hmm. Um, you know, I think that failing to get out of the group stage, failing to beat Panama, uh, that, that is a massive stain, not just on Burhalter, but on a lot of these players, right? It, it's up to them to kind of wash off that stain and prove to themselves and prove to this country that they truly are uh, the next great generation of U.S. soccer. Mm. Robert, what about you? Can uh, the, the, US, the, the United States, with its massive immigrant population, with some great, um, great, great people coming from Africa, from South America, Central America as well, that on one side with Marshall Pochettino, can you create a formidable unit that can wipe away uh, the stain, as it were, of the last Copa America and make a major, major push for the World Cup in 2026? I doubt it, <laughs> but I, I would love it. I would love it. I, this is my favorite team. I live for them. I, but, but why I do you doubt it, guys? Just so, so sorry. Why do you doubt it? Greece, Greece in 2004. You, were, you watched that, didn't you, Zach? You watched that, didn't you, Robin? A very average team stunned the entire world and won a competition. Nobody even gave them a, a chance of winning a single game. And hey, if Dude, there's we're, a... We're, be we're better than Greece. We're better than Greece, and I, and I know it. And And... I like this team, and I like our players, and I like that we're bringing in the coach. Um, I don't, you know, Zach was saying he doesn't think that one coach can be totally transformative, and I, I agree with that. I, I really liked our coach, Jurgen Klinsmann. I thought he really opened a lot of doors for us internationally. I thought he uh, helped evolve our team, but he wasn't going to be the guy who got it done either, and I don't think, you know, I don't think any coach they hired is going to do it, I would just really like it if they did. I, I, you know, the United States is the melting pot. We do have talent coming in from everywhere culturally. Um, but I just don't think it's going to happen in my lifetime. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Finally, guys, let me just ask you this question. Uh, Zach, you, what would represent success for the United States at the FIFA World Cup in 2026? Nobody expects them to win it, but what would you be happy with? Oof, that's a really good question. I think that uh, I would be happy with a competent performance that really sh showed a lot of fight and courage against the top sides. I think that ultimately, you know, getting to the knockout round is the bare minimum. Uh, it would be great to see them get to the quarterfinals for the first time since, I believe, 2002. Uh, but obviously, that's going to be a lot to ask, getting this team among the eight best teams in world soccer. But ultimately, I think that uh, a successful campaign would be just convincing performances, you know, not really falling down on the job and uh, letting the nerves get the best of them, as we've seen in so many different occasions, right, such as the Uruguay match in Copa America, the loss to the Netherlands in the round of 16, right? Holding their nerve and at least putting up a good fight. But uh, just to piggyback on what Robert was saying as, as far as the melting pot goes, I do think that's a big reason to be optimistic about the U.S. So many uh, players coming in from immigrant backgrounds, right? Fuller and Balogun uh, at center forward, uh, so many players of Mexican descent as well making their mark in the U.S. We've seen time and time again, right? So many player, so many teams such as Spain with you know Lamine Yamal and Nico Williams finding success from immigrants, taking that next step in their development. I do think that 
if the U.S. Uh, manages to have a fantastic 2026 World Cup, it's going to uh, it's we're going to see a lot of uh, immigrants or the sons of immigrants having a big role to play on home soil. Okay, uh, Rob, you, your opinion? What would be what would represent success for you? Uh, I mean, the short answer is I want to get to the semifinals, <laughs> but I think Zach nailed exactly what. Why are you laughing? <laughs> hey, I'm not laughing. I'm just, I mean, it's America, home of the free land of the brave. It's possible. I've got, I've got an extra decade on, on Zach when it comes to suffering with this team. And I, <laughs> I like what he just said about sort of the character that we want to see in our national team. And it's like, even if we lose, we fight hard. Even if we're outclassed and outtalented, we have a, a character. And, and, and for a long time, that was a very admirable part of the national team. And I feel we got away with it under our, our last coach, um, who I really didn't like. But uh, <laughs> as long as we play hard and fight, you know, I'll, I'll be with this team forever. I, I'll be proud of them. And that's what I want us to do. And so I really don't need to win the World Cup. I don't need to get to the semifinals. But... Um, I would like to. Okay. Well, after that speech, all I can just hear playing in my head is star-spangled banners uh, all over again. Your patriotism is shining through, my friend. But thank you very much, uh, Andrew Robert Powell, for joining us, and our good friend Zach Lowry as well for joining us all the way from the United States tonight and talk about the U.S. national team. We'd obviously like to wish you all the very best of luck in 2026, and hopefully the Super Eagles of Niger will be there as well because we're currently swanning around in the uh, bottom reaches of, group, of our group qualifications right now. But, hey, I don't want to talk about that right now. But thank you guys for joining us. It's an absolute pleasure having you on the show. All right. Thank you, guys, gentlemen. Thank you.